Hey, what's up everyone? Derek at nerdorDie.com here. And in this video, I want to show you how to use masks inside of OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. It's something that's really easy to do and can take your stream to the next level. So on screen right now, you're going to see a couple of examples of what it looks like to use this effect. And if you want, you can head over to nerdorDie.com and grab a bunch of free masks that we just created to try out for your own stream. The example that I'm going to use from this is going to be from the terminal pack that we just created, and it's going to be with a webcam frame that's specifically designed to use a webcam mask. So then you can kind of see how you can tie in both the graphics as well as filters with your own overlay design. So just sit tight and we'll get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is look at this webcam frame that we have here, and you can see kind of at the top and bottom we have this section that looks like it needs to be cut out. And generally, this isn't very easy to do, or it's not even possible with normal cropping. But with a webcam mask or an image mask, more particularly, we can go ahead and crop out specific areas very easily. What I'm going to do first is just show this image here, and this is what we're going to apply our mask to. And this is currently what I would consider my webcam. This is exactly how I look in real life, of course. So you can do this on an image, a video, anything like that. So with the actual image or whatever you want to apply the mask to, you can click the new filters button that's located there, or you can right click and add a filter. And then we'll hit the plus icon and go to image mask blend. Once we're here, we're going to browse and find the mask that we want to use. Now we do include multiple masks for a lot of our designs. And this is going to be the 16 by 9 aspect ratio as well as the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. This way the mask perfectly fits. But in this example, all you need to worry about is kind of how your webcam is. Generally, most people have 16 by 9 webcams. So we're going to select this file and add it on in. Now you'll see the PNG and JPEGs, but we're going to select the JPEG for this example. And with everything set to what it is currently set to at default, we're going to just go ahead and click close and look at what we have done with this mask. Now on our image, or in your case, probably your webcam, you should see that this kind of masks out the areas that you want it to hide. And now we're not really done just yet. What we need to do is actually reposition and scale things and have it match up to the webcam frame that we're using. So typically what I like to do is start in the top left and then go down to the bottom right and work from there. So once I kind of nudge things around with the arrow keys here, I'm going to just go ahead and drag things back and try to scale it in and fit perfectly. Again, this is something that might take a little bit of time. You might need to nudge things around or even kind of just rescale a little bit. But once you get that perfect fit, you'll be all done setting things up and we'll talk about how we can actually crop things. So once we kind of have everything positioned exactly how we want, we could even use uh, the alt crop method where you actually hold down alt and drag in to just kind of get that nice, perfect fit that we're looking for. So something important is I actually made this in a scene called webcam. And the reason for that is that if I actually go into my gameplay scene, everything's going to be grouped together. So in this source, what I first need to do is just kind of fix things up as I need it. And then I'll actually go back and hide my color source here so that it's not shown when I add this scene into another scene. This is called scene grouping, it's something we highly recommend using. So what I'll do is right click, go into add and add in a scene. I'll select my webcam one and add it in. And you can see that everything here is just grouped together. It's going to be positioned exactly how I want it because I don't want to accidentally nudge things around or ruin all that fine detail that I went through so that I can easily just drag and position my webcam frame exactly where I want. Now, back in my webcam scene here, we can make further adjustments as we need, and they'll update into that other scene that's added into the gameplay scene. So if you don't know about scene nesting, I highly recommend checking out other videos about it. It's something we definitely recommend using. OK, now I want to talk about how these actually work so that you can better understand things and just get a better idea of how you can use it in the future as well. Now, what I want to do is actually go into my files and I'm going to directly add in this image that we use for the mask into OBS Studio. So here it is. 
and you'll basically see this black and white with a little bit of gray image. And the easiest way to think about masks is this. Black is going to hide and white is going to show. And then any grays in between are going to hide depending on the level of gray or the, the closer they are to black or white, of course. So that means that when we apply this to the mask filter, it's going to do that to the source that we apply it to. So the white is going to show and the black is going to hide. And of course, the grays are going to do the little fade effect that we showed earlier. So that's the easiest way to describe it. It's kind of like a window where the white area of the window is what you can see through and the whiter it is, the easier it is to see through it. So if I kind of align it here to the webcam um, example that we're using or the image example that we're using, you'll get a better idea of exactly how it's working. I'll kind of toggle it on and off just to show you a little bit of what's going on. So hopefully that kind of clears it up and gives you a better idea of how they work. Now, this is, of course, for the certain type of mask blend mode that we're using. However, OBS Studio does support other blend modes. And in this example, which is a PNG here, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on where there's actually an alpha channel, which is basically a transparent channel that we're looking at. And that is going to be what is hidden and what is shown. And sort of similar, the white is what's going to show. And then the alpha area is going to be hidden, which is that transparent layer. Now that only works when you go into the filter and change it to the alpha mode, which normally we don't like to use, but the easiest thing to do is if one isn't working, just try the other one. A quick concept to understand is that a JPEG can only support the color channel mode while a PNG can support both the alpha channel and color channel. So the mask that we're using in this example is actually a JPEG that is going to use the color channel and the free pack that we released on our website is actually PNGs that will support just the color channel as well. All right, so I hope this video helped you get a better understanding of how to use masks and how to apply them in both OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. Again, in Streamlabs OBS, the process is exactly the same. So if you're doing it in OBS Studio, you can definitely do it in Streamlabs OBS. If there's any questions you have, leave them in the comments, or if there's any kind of mask types you wanna see, let us know as well, because we're looking to make another video about this and go into a bit more detail on it. And who knows, maybe we'll release a free pack or a free resource with all types of different mask options that you can use for your stream. And if you like this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please subscribe with notifications on for more videos like that. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.